You're in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. It's quite normal for new guests or friends of the Paracast to be asked what kind of mic they're using. And it's so frequent that they're using blue mics. Like I have a blue Yeti. And Randall has a blue snowball. And our special guest, Brian Bonner, has a blue snowball. And they're getting free advertising, which isn't too fair, but that's how life goes. But blue also is just brought out by Logitech. So I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe they will give up their professional mics. Because Logitech, you know, gaming and advanced input devices. Oh, that's so well, bl- well, blue, they just they dominated the market because they just gave us a half decent mic you could plug directly into your USB port. I like the Yeti because it's a better sounding mic, no criticism, and it's got a mute switch. Right, and it's, I'm imagining that one's also direct to USB, right? Yes, direct to USB. They do have a blue Yeti Pro, which can be used direct to USB or with XLR connectors to an external mixer. But lately, I have not been using the external mixer because I reached a point where we're getting the same sound. The mixer gives me better flexibility in muting, but the mute switch is pretty quiet on this mic. So why am I doing that? Why are we talking about this? Well, we're talking to a new friend of the show, Brian Bonner. He's associated with the Rocky... Let me get this correct here so we get <laughs> confused here. It's a long name. It is the Rocky Mountain Paranormal Research Society. Is there an acronym for that? Um, No, it's an initialism because you can pronounce an acronym. So the the, the long answer is no. By the way, he's got a shirt, custom (laughs) shirt. So let me ask you, Brian, you are really kind of a jack of all trades in terms of paranormal. But what led you from a normal life, if you had a normal life, to being uh, interested in the paranormal? Well, I always tell people that it was pretty much bad choices and lots of alcohol. But realistically, I'll say it in a way that I, I always do. I blame my mother. When I was growing up, she really loved horror movies. And she wanted somebody to watch them with her, but I was really way too young to be doing that. So she made me watch them with her and explained how they worked and what they were and that they weren't real. You know, this is how the effects are done, this sort of a thing. And as I got older, I was watching all of these same types of films, but they were now starting to say based on a true story inspired by actual events. And that got me confused because I grew up learning that it was all make believe. And then all of a sudden it's real. So I initially set out to find out what the truth behind that was, and it just kind of led its way into paranormal research. Just to show a connection here very slightly, the person who was responsible for the beginnings of my interest, mostly in sci-fi, but led to UFOs, the person responsible was my late brother, Wally. That's Wallace H. Steinberg, and if you want to know who he was, he has a New York Times obituary. He was a big deal in Big Pharma one of the early big pharma people, and died too young, like 23 years ago. In any case, when I was a kid, and he was 11 years older than I, he would tell me horror stories. And he'd play the old shows on the radio, The Shadow and everything. I think he wanted to frighten me to death or something. But here I am. I'm still here. So maybe it had the reverse effect. That's how I got involved. But when you went into the working world... Did that influence your final decision or what? Well, what really influenced it as far as being able to to justify what I was doing was the fact that it seemed to be all of my education, all of my interests seemed to be things that I could apply to the field. And that since then, I've actually learned tons more. But that's really where the the working aspect of it came from you know for example i went to college for photography and that's a great thing to have when you're getting into this field of research what kind of work do you do uh well now i do nothing related to it i work for a utility company but you know sometimes uh it's all about the money can you give us maybe a couple of examples of how your experience with photography has helped you in your investigation with the paranormal 
Well, it definitely initially what would happen is people were bringing forward all sorts of things saying, you know, here is my ghost picture. Here is what I believe is some sort of proof of the paranormal. And what would happen is me not knowing any better about anything paranormal would look at it from a completely photographic standpoint and go, oh, hold on a minute. I know what that is. Being able to go in and try and help people explain any just normal photographic anomalies. And over the years, it's been helpful because especially with, you know, 20 years of looking at, you know, people's ghost pictures. It's nice to be able to say, OK, this, you know, this may have been what caused it. It might not necessarily be a ghost. So let's take a look and see what it might be. All right. So you're looking at ghost pictures. Of course, we've all seen all those crazy reality shows where they have photos of ghosts or maybe mysteriously enough when the cameras show up. The ghosts take the cue as if they're performers, live performers, and they make themselves visible, at least for the sake of the producers. Do you get much in the way of UFO pictures? They seem to come in waves. Uh, what I've noticed over the years is interest in paranormal topics seems to be cyclical about things. For a while, it's UFOs, then it's cryptids, then it's ghosts. Uh, UFOs were really hot probably six or seven years ago. And it's starting to come back now. I'm starting to see a little bit. But it's definitely slowed down over the past few years. So for your purposes, how would you define the word paranormal? Uh, anything that is... That's a really good question. Anything that's at least assumed to be unexplainable, unexplained. Something that, you know, everything for the most part that's under science right now at one point probably would have been labeled paranormal because we didn't understand it. And I really think that's where the paranormal falls is it's things that we just haven't either come up with an explanation for or are mislabeling something because technically everything should be normal, natural. So saying something supernatural to me, just means that we don't really understand it right now. Okay, that's fair enough, because there's so many different interpretations of what it means. But you seem to be a very rational person, someone who's looking at the phenomena from a skeptical and critical thinking perspective. So getting our terms defined at the beginning is probably one of the best ways to start the conversation. Well, and one of the things that, and it's made it terribly difficult over the years, is trying to keep some sort of a scientific protocol to it, which in this field is darn near impossible. But, you know, if we're going to be accepted with whatever results we come up with in the rest of the world, we need to be able to legitimately say we've applied you know, the, the scientific method to it. We've tested things. We've ruled out all the other possible answers. And in doing that, um, you know, un unfortunately, it, it does knock out a lot of things that would be considered evidence otherwise. You know, I'm going to ask you some more questions about that, me and Randall. As we progress, our guest is someone we call a new friend of the show. How's that? Everybody's a friend of the show until they attack us. Behind our backs, some do. Most are friends still. Brian Bonner of the Rocky Mountain Paranormal Research Society. We'll learn more about that, too. More to come with Gene and Brian and Randall. You're in. The Theracast. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast Jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have 
a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. Long distance travel or long hours in front of a computer can take its toll on your body. Get relief for your neck or back pain when you search Amazon for sunshine pillows, heating wraps, and pads, often listed as an Amazon choice. Why take another pill? Now, from Sunny Bay and by customer demand, we introduce our extra-long neck heating wrap, a complete wrap, wide and hands-free, and brings fast relief to those who suffer from neck or back pain. You can easily find sunshine pillows on Amazon. Or search Amazon for our new Sunny Bay disposable heat pads. Or look for Sunny Bay heated neck wraps for relief from back pain to menstrual pain and cramps. Sometimes life can be a pain in the neck or back or shoulder. See why our company, Biomed DB Design, has a lifetime 100% positive rating on both Amazon and Etsy. Just go to Amazon.com and search Sunny Bay or call us 253-678-1361. Healthcare reform is confusing, but whether it's finding an affordable insurance plan, keeping your doctor, or being able to afford needed prescriptions, navigating the healthcare system has become a challenge. Control your own healthcare costs and choices with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It is an association of self-pay patients who unite with like-minded people to share the cost of each other's medical needs. Neighbor helping neighbor. Learn more now by going to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with ReputationDefender.com. What the Internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with ReputationDefender.com. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771 for your free reputation analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper, article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with ReputationDefender.com. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Or visit ReputationDefender.com. Bacon lovers, we ship free. Try our amazing bacon. No refrigeration required. Proprietary value-added packaging provides 10-year shelf life and protects the leanest, thickest, center-cut, fully-cooked bacon in America today. Ready to eat right from the pouch or warm and serve. Savory and delicious. Wholesale price for your everyday use. Order today at readytoeatbacon.com. Readytoeatbacon.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. You know, it still sounds like Princess Bride. Remember? <laughs> In Princess Bride, somebody was trying to sound like a ghost or something. And that's how it goes. That's an interesting question, too, Brian. Do you find people faking ghost reports? Obviously, in terms of UFOs, most photos are just lights in the sky, so they could be anything. And frankly, I think you might agree, the ones that show a lot of specific things are more apt to be fake. In terms of ghost photographs or things that supposedly are showing apparitions, Brian, do you see a lot of fakery there? I don't see as many fakes as I do misunderstandings. And the reason I say that is most when they go ghost hunting, I, that's literally what they're doing is going ghost hunting. So they're looking for the ghost. They're not looking for whatever the explanation be, may be, ghost or otherwise. 
So when you're trying to interpret, and photographs are a great example, something that you may not be a expert in, anything that's unexplainable becomes that ghost that you're looking for. So I see that more than I do fakes. Now, with the advent of the uh, ghost app on cell phones, uh, that's definitely been a, uh, a thorn in the side because I'm constantly looking at pictures that people have obviously created in their phone. And they're saying, look, we finally captured a ghost. It's like, no, you use this app. So I have to buy all of the apps and keep the ghosts on file to know what people are faking. Tell me more about the ghost app. Is that something I can download for my iPhone? Uh, there are probably, I'm going to say about two dozen apps that you can get for your iPhone that are add a ghost to my photograph. And they share a lot of the same ghosts. Some of them are so over the top, you could never accept them. One of the things that I think is interesting is even though they're taking a color photograph, the bulk of the images that they use in these ghost apps are black and white. So that's kind of a good give. Uh, and it's not limited to ghosts. They actually have UFO apps. They have uh, some apps that will drop a Bigfoot into your picture. And, you know, they're for entertainment. People are trying to, you know, put them forward as evidence to mess with people. How about stuff like uh, orbs where they have the uh, sort of like soap bubble type things that people are calling apparitions, sometimes with reflections in them? Or how is that explained photographically? Well, there's (laughs) that's one of the things that really got me into it because I was looking at those and they seem to be something I'd encountered outside of paranormal. and pretty much explained it away at that point. But in looking at the history of photography, pre-digital photography, you didn't see a lot of, you know, quote, orbs. And the reason being, back even when, you know, we were doing ghost hunting with film, you were really particular about how you took a photograph because it cost a lot of money every time you pulled that shutter button. And you'd actually think about it. Is this picture going to turn out if I got it framed right? Now, people go into conditions that the camera really wasn't designed to work in in the first place and get bizarre results. And those bizarre results, once again, seem to equal ghosts most of the time. Well, of course, if it's bizarre, it has to be a ghost. Well, of course. Now, the thing is, a lot of things can co- can cause the what people would refer to as orbs. I hate to use the word dust because it's such a odd statement, but dust is a portion of it. Any type of airborne particulate. And if you don't think that there's any type of dust floating in the air, grab a laser and take a look at the beam. If you can see the beam, there's something floating in the air. It's just that we don't notice it. We're so used to it, and it's not illuminated with a really bright light or a flash while we're looking. So that's like uh, for maybe people who haven't used a laser sometimes, say if you're in a dark room and you just open the window just a crack, you'll get this shaft of light coming in, and you can see all the dust floating around in the air. That kind of an effect. Absolutely. In fact, uh, if you're ever at a movie theater, just look back at the projection booth and watch the beam coming out of the booth. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, it's it's the same thing. You know, let me ask you something here quickly Mm -hmm. in terms of effects. In the presentation this week, ladies and gentlemen, by Tim Cook and crew at Apple with the new iPhone XS and XS Max, They were showing you advanced editing features for your photographs, for your movies, in addition to iMovie. I mean, you can do extraordinary things, almost professional, on iPhone. In fact, the famous director Steven Soderbergh, what does he do? He shoots motion pictures on iPhones. Absolutely, and that's the thing. With cell phones, it's been possible, but it's getting much, much better. But anybody that has pretty much any skill whatsoever can find a way to edit video and photos on their computer. It's so simple. And I'll I'll give you an example. The first time that I ever tried 
faking a UFO or a ghost photograph was in the, I'm going to say, early 90s. And they were pretty successful jobs. And this was when things like Photoshop were just starting to come out. So as long as you had access to the equipment, and it doesn't have to be really high-end equipment, it, it can be done very easily. Let me tell you here, you can get an iPhone 10, the new one, the 10X. You can probably lease it from AT&T Next and other services for about $40 a month. It has all these tools free on it. Absolutely. And, you know, there are some other apps out there that are free or extremely cheap that even in video, you can add UFOs to your videos. You can add just all sorts of things, not just the stills. That's that's where it's gone now. I mean, I can I can have Bigfoot run across the front of the screen or I can have a UFO landing in the background of my video. And to the untrained person, there's no way for them to not have a reason to think that it's real, especially when the source is coming to you saying, look what I saw last night. Look what I finally captured on film. Yeah, some of it looks so real that I've got a little bit of experience with it, but uh, I have to actually research it and go and try and cross-reference the clip and find out how it was made and who it was made by. And then I might find, oh, this was a a demo reel for a, a movie that was to be made in Japan or some foreign country that is just leaked out onto the internet and is completely special affected. But I would have no way to know. There, there's no little lines around it. It looks like it's part of the scene. It all seems to to make sense. I, how does the average person? How is the average person supposed to be able to differentiate between those and the real thing, if there is such a thing? You know, well, well, let's hold that question, the answer to it, from Brian, yep. to our next segment. Okay, Brian, Gene, Randall, you're in the. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. It's a no-brainer. A Big Berkey water filter is the one you need, period. You need a water filter that removes chlorine, fluoride, pharmaceuticals, BPA, and other endocrine disruptors, pesticides, bacteria, viruses, and much more, right? And does it all at only two cents per gallon. Get the original and most trusted name in gravity water filtration, Big Berkey. And now GCN listeners receive 5% off ceramic filter systems using code GCN. Call or click 1-877-99-BERKEY or BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Most of you know that heart disease is the number one silent killer in the U.S. What if I told you for just $54.95 a month you could fight against heart disease naturally? At Heart and Body Extract, we've been helping thousands of people get back to a healthier heart. Don't just take my word for it. Check out all of the success stories at hbextract.com. Or to order, call 866-295-5305. That's 866-295-5305. hbextract.com. Don't risk it when you can take charge of it. USA Radio News. Heavy rain continues to threaten the Carolinas. Meteorologist Allison Chinchar says North Carolina's old record for rainfall was 24 inches from Floyd nearly 20 years ago. We have already broken that record. The new one stands at 30 and a half inches, and that number is only going to go up. Widespread amounts still expected to be about 6 to 12 inches. The locations are beginning to change. Now you're starting to have that concern for the heavier rain for places like Raleigh, Columbia, and even Charlotte, North Carolina, and then even as you head into those mountain areas, places like Asheville, Hickory, those locations are now going to start to get a lot of that heavy rain. More than 800,000 people remain without power in North Carolina, and Governor Roy Cooper says a little more than 20,000 people are staying at 150 shelters. You're listening to USA Radio News. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies in a Capsule. I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. I went from being able to work 
14, 16 hours a day with no problem to where I could barely walk a block to the store. I went on to the phytonutrients about six months ago, and within a couple of months, my medical doctor had cut my prescriptions down in a, a little bit smaller dosage. The next time I went back, a month later, I walked into the doctor's office and he says, my gosh, what's happened to you? You don't even look like the same person. He looked at my legs and the swelling had gone down. My blood pressure was down. The venous stasis ulcers that I had had on my legs for the last four or five years because of the poor circulation were all healed, and I'm feeling far better. When you call, use discount code USA, and we'll take 35% off your first month's order and ship it to you free. Call 800-246-8751. That's 1-800-246-8751. Or go online to balanceofnature.com and use discount code USA. Aging is one thing that affects everyone. George has talked about the power of stem cells for years. Now there's a new serum that harnesses that stem cell power to bring back your youthful look. Beverly Hills doctor, Nathan Newman. Stem cells are basically our fountain of youth. This is what maintains our body's reparative regenerative abilities. As we age, every cell breaks down and has to be replaced, and what replaces it is the stem cell. Dr. Newman and Janess have developed Luminess. Luminess. Luminess takes the science of stem cells using the same growth factor complex that literally heals our cells, slowing the appearance of the aging process. Apply Luminess twice daily and on average see results in a week. Learn more, watch our video, and order today at a special Coast website, healthylooking.com. Plus, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. Again, that's healthylooking.com. Luminous for a healthier, much younger, better-looking you. Buy now at healthylooking.com. Hi, it's Grant Cameron from PresidentialUFO.com. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. If that echo is overwhelming you, Randall. In fact, I think you're lost in an echo chamber. I'll give you an anecdote of that. Paul McCartney, in his Rolling Stone interview, pointed out that in the early days of the Beatles in the 60s, they didn't have digital effects, okay, before digital. So they had physical echo chambers in the studio. And he and his other compatriots, his three other Beatles, would go into one of these echo chambers, huddle in the corner and smoke, uh, you know, the substance mentioned indirectly and got to get you into my life. That's what it's about. My mic's not digital. It's not even electronic. It doesn't even have a battery. That's my, I mean, my echo mic. Well, and... Have you ever actually seen a mechanical reverb? It yes. has a microphone on one end, a speaker on the other, and between the two, it has springs that vibrate as you talk. Exactly. That's, that's what this thing has. It's got a little spring inside of it. Yep. And that's the, that's what gives it its sound. That's now that everybody massive. knows. <laughs> and it only costs, I think, about $1.50. And it sounds like it's worth every penny of it. <laughs> I promise you. Got to lay back on it. I can barely understand the other part. Randall, you asked a question before the last segment. Maybe recap it slightly and give Brian a chance to respond. Sure. How is the average person supposed to be able to differentiate between these high-quality fakes and the real thing? Uh, that's the problem is you can't. It takes somebody that either A, has a long history of looking at things so you can at least come up with a suspicion of where to look or how to examine it. Uh, one of the things that's kind of nice with especially the still stuff, but even even video at this point, is the cameras and the software throw a lot of data onto that file. So when somebody sends me an image and says, what do you think about this? Well, in the old days, before digital, It was rather hard to say, I know exactly what happened when you took this. But now I can crack open your file and say, I know you took it at this date, at this location, with these settings. So I can start putting the pieces together to say, well, this might be what caused it. And those pieces of metadata can be modified, though. I I have software that I can you know, absolutely fake a photograph and then go in and 
change it so it looks like it hasn't been modified. So you've got to watch out for that, too. So it's unfortunately become a world where your evidence, whatever it may be, is only as credible as the people that you're getting it from. You have uh, in your uh, bio, it says that you've got experience with deception detection. Uh, What is that exactly? Imagine, oh, let's say interrogation techniques. When you're talking to people to determine, are they telling you the truth? And I've taken several courses on that in order to not necessarily see if people are telling me the truth as far as, you know, do they believe it? Or are they telling me a third party story? And do they believe what they're telling me? So just the whole belief behind it. If somebody comes to me and I know for a fact that they're making stuff up, it, it makes it a lot quicker of a case. And the other thing that you run into is people tend to escalate the stories. So if you go to somebody's house and they say, well, we've been hearing you know, weird what sounds like footsteps around the house. And you may be able to say, well, we've discovered down in the crawl space that you have loose pipes and a water heater. And every time it kicks on, it sounds like somebody walking down the hallway. They'll ramp it up to the next step and they'll say, but what about this? And you say, okay, well, about this. And they work their way up to the point where the walls were bleeding the night before. And there's two things. Number one, if that was really happening, that probably would have been your starting argument. But also, it's helpful to be able to see people just tend to add to stories naturally. I mean, it's not even something that you intentionally do. So it's more of an interpersonal uh, skill than it is with the technical. So you've got the cameras, the technical equipment on one side, and then you've got the actual in-person interview. Absolutely. And honestly, I think while the, the, the psychological side of things isn't something that we can put forward as true evidence, it's a great way to at least start looking towards what that evidence may be. And knowing that somebody's telling you the truth, even if they're misinterpreting something, is a, a much better start. And using critical thinking, I think, is much more important than any any tool you can use. So f- critical thinking, that's a really Im- important thing. I'm a big fan of that myself. Here on the Paracast, one of our, I'm a big fan of critical thinking as well. And here on the Paracast, one of our mottos is separating the signal from the noise. And critical thinking, I think, is a really excellent tool for doing that. How do you define critical thinking for your purposes? For our purpose is, uh, let me give you an example here. When There's two uh, general schools of people not using critical thinking. You have the cynics who don't believe in absolutely anything they could have a bigfoot jump out in front of them and they would say no it's a fake you have the other side which i'll call the non-believing cynics the the or sorry the believing cynics or just flat out believers that regardless of what kind of a rational explanation they're always going to fall back on the paranormal explanation What we try to do is stay right in the middle on the skeptical, and I know it's a bad word, but skeptic means that you're open to all interpretations until you can come up with a rational explanation or a reasonable explanation. And trying to keep that mindset is very difficult. Uh, We've actually come up with a thing that we call the chart of how to not be stupid. Uh, What that is, are you familiar with Occam's razor? Yes. So, well, for those that don't, uh, uh, to make it a quick one, the Occam's razor is a scientific axiom that says, all things considered, the simplest explanation is usually the correct one. So when you're looking at a case and they say, I was sitting in my bedroom and I heard something at the window scratching, you have to start with the rational commonly explainable things before you jump to the paranormal explanation. 
you have to say, well, is there a tree outside the window? Was there a dog outside the window? Is it possible there's wildlife? You have to go through all of these things before you can even start to consider any type of a paranormal explanation. The problem that you run into is while you may go through all of what you think are the logical explanations, if you talk to more people, it seems like it's a gulp that keeps moving away from you because you're like, oh, I didn't think about that. Let's look at this explanation. Oh, well, I didn't think about this. Let's try that. So being able to go into some place with a completely open mind and not keep your own personal biases with you too. I mean, the, the two explanations that I would have are if you go into a house after you've gone to 20 investigations that nothing has happened, you are pretty cynical in what you're doing. You're like, there's just no such thing as ghosts. I just, I don't know why I'm doing this anymore. Or you go into this creepy old mansion that's been abandoned for a year and has all these ghost stories attached to it. And it's the other way. You're like, how could this place not be haunted? So using that critical thinking to apply just common sense to things is really, I think, the most important part. The most important part right now is to break. For a few pieces of business, and then back with Brian and Gene and Randall. Randall, lay back a bit on the echo. You're in the Paracast. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. When you use public Wi-Fi, hackers and identity thieves can see anything you do online. Embarrassing photos, your web history, even your passwords. That's why I use private internet access to encrypt my internet connection for less than 10 cents a day. Sign up now at privateinternetaccess.com and in just a few minutes, you'll be browsing anonymously and only sharing what you want to share. Privateinternetaccess.com. It's time to protect your online privacy. Hear that? That's the sound of a house being trashed while a gang of thieves ransack the place. And what they don't steal will be destroyed. This year, resolve not to be the next victim of a break-in. Go to faketv.com and discover a device that creates the illusion someone inside is watching TV, even when you're miles away. Security is a mindset, and fake TV should be part of your security solution. Be vigilant, but not fearful. Faketv.com. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I started fighting the IRS over 40 years ago when they tried to seize my mother's house. I sued the IRS and won. I beat the IRS then, and I've been beating them ever since. I wrote the book on tax debt settlement, and I've helped thousands of people deal with tax problems they thought might never be solved. I can help you too. If you owe taxes you can't pay, don't wait another day. There's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, danpilla.com. That's danpilla.com, danpilla.com. This is Elizabeth McCabe, a.k.a. Lucky One of Truth Frequency News. I wanted to tell you all about Extendivite from HeartDrop.com. Y'all know I check everything before I air it. When I heard about Extendivite on TFR, I went to HeartDrop.com and started my research. It's got cayenne. That's good for blood and circulation. It stimulates the blood flow. It's got garlic, which fights bacteria like antibiotics, and it lowers the cholesterol and blood pressure. It also has milk thistle, which is the best detox for liver. I couldn't wait to try it out, and I'm glad I did four months ago. And here's obvious results. 
My hands and feet don't get cold anymore. The varicose veins have faded too. My wrists don't hurt after typing all day. Now I tell you all this because it's true and I want you to really live life. Try Extendivite. Go to heartdrop.com and order it. Extendivite is only $69.95 for a two-month supply of either capsules or liquid. Call now. That's 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. If you're talking, they will hear you every single time. Why are we getting killed like this? Kyle's not here. Got caught drinking beer in the park a couple of nights ago. Really? Yeah. Zero tolerance. He's out for the season. Harsh. Hey, he knew not to drink. We've made that clear to all of our kids, right? Uh, no, not really. Bill, if we don't tell them what we expect and why they shouldn't drink, how are they going to know? Talk. They hear you. Hear you. You can do it if you try. Hi, this is James Fox from Chasing UFOs. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. The almost echo-free Randall. Brian, yep. among you've obviously uncovered fakes. In terms of ghost photos, which we talked about earlier, are you aware or have you encountered any ones that you just can't figure out? the explanation for not really i mean there are some that imagine somebody handing you a picture where there's just like an extra person in the photograph and they say that person absolutely wasn't there when the photograph was taken my answer is okay i i can't tell you that they were there but by all aspects of looking at the picture and what I know about it, there was somebody there when the picture was taken. So it falls back into something that I, I kind of hold near and dear, but both sides really hate me using the, the word is a personal experience. And I think that's one of the things that really keeps us going is you, me, everybody have probably had at least a handful of personal experiences that we just haven't been able to come up with a rational explanation for completely. And that's, that's amazing. And as long as it wasn't something that's horrifying you, that's, that's beautiful. Hold on to it. Keep it. Not, not everybody gets to have that one. So it's a hard call. Can you tell us about some cases that, where some other paranormal investigators have got it horribly wrong? It usually starts like this. It's 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and my phone rings. And it's some person crying on the other end of the phone, saying, I am so sorry we didn't contact you to start with, but we just had another team out here. They verified that the house has, you know, insert here, you know, demons, ghosts, whatever. And they left and said that they can't really do anything about it. Now what do we do? At that point, there's no way to do a legitimate investigation. And even if we were able to come up with any kind of rational explanation as to what it was, They've already been told by somebody who unfortunately has been perceived as an expert that they have whatever the problem may be. So that's usually how it starts. And we've had a lot of cases that, and I, I hate going down this path, but I always end up there. One of the current trends over probably the past, I'm going to say 10, maybe a little less years is for families that have some sort of a relationship problem, usually including physical or psychological ab abuse, blame it on paranormal uh, phenomena. And when you have a group go in that has never had to deal with any kind of psychology, they go, well, yeah, ghosts cause that sort of thing, or demons make people fight with each other and don't look towards the, the actual psychological aspects of it. We've had a few cases that we've had to get law enforcement involved because the, the abuse was so bad, and other paranormal groups had gone in and said, you know, well, it's not you, it's the demon. And when, in fact, it was just a big case of the devil made me do it. 
And they're just using that as an excuse in, in your assessment Absolutely. in order to, right. Absolutely. Uh, and I imagine this could also extend to cases where maybe people uh, assume that this is the case. They're, they're not necessarily abusing anyone, but maybe they might have um, some kind of medical problem, like maybe epilepsy or something like that. Well, and that's actually a really good example. Let me uh, twist a bit of the story to, to explain what you just said there. We had a case, and it's, it's really a sad case, where there was a very young child who, because of its, the way that it was acting, the things that the parents were saying this child was doing, we said, this, this kid has epilepsy. There's, it, they're showing all of the signs of it. it, it get, get them to a doctor. And a a long, 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 long story kind of cut short is we ended up kind of walking away from this case because there were a lot of major psychological problems with the people involved. But years later, it turns out that this young child not only did have epilepsy, but they never took it to the doctor. Eventually, this child ended up, I would say bedridden, but... uh, was living between the parents' bed and a cat litter box in a pretty much vegetative state because of untreated epilepsy. And it, that's one of the things is a lot of our cases have ended up with things like this. And it's sad, but at the same time, it's gotten to the point where somebody calls us. It used to be, I just don't want to deal with this because I know what's going to happen. And now it's a case of we need to deal with this because if somebody else deals with it that doesn't have the the critical thinking skills to deal with it they're only going to you know encourage whatever it is that's this family may be doing and make it worse you sound like actually a breath of fresh air in the field as you were saying i think back at the beginning uh you had the sudden revelation that maybe some of this is real and you looked into the the television programming and started to discover that the, there's these people out there who have been watching a lot of television, but that a lot of it consists of, say, docufiction or the like, where you know bits and pieces and have truths and and um, emphasizing or overemphasizing things, sensationalizing people's stories just to uh, make a buck, I guess. Oh, absolutely, and you know, kind of two parts to that. One of the cases that I use as an example of that is we went to a house that the family was pretty much insistent that there was something going on in the younger son's room. And when we got there, I said, "Okay, well, we can talk about this. Can we get the kids out of the room? Because I don't want them any more scared than they are. And they're like, oh, no, no. We talk about this sort of stuff all the time. Like, okay, well, your call. You're the parents. So when we started talking about it, I said, so what do you think is going on in this child's room? And the mother said, so have you ever watched that TV show Paranormal State? I said, well, a couple of times it you know, plays out as a comedy. I can, I can deal with that. And <laughs> she said, well, the same demon that's following the lead investigator around is in my child's room. Deadpan serious. And I said, you know, you guys watch a lot of paranormal television, don't you? She says, we watch it all the time. Every night we watch new shows. I said, okay, do me a favor. For a couple of weeks, maybe a month, stop watching them. Go outside, get some air, go to a movie, go hang out with some friends. Quit with the paranormal stuff. And that worked. But they were so convinced And that's something that I've kind of seen happen across the board is everybody watches these paranormal shows and takes them so seriously, they consider them to be training. And one of the things I use as an example, I've been on a handful of the paranormal TV shows. And docudrama, docu-soap, these are all great explanations for them. 
there may be a handful of something possible reality in the background, but by the time you see it, it's it's entertainment. So is there any of it that has actually something going for it? Like it's, it, it sounds like so your, your view is that none of this really exists other than as a phenomenon that is misinterpreted or uh, made up. So do you, do you actually believe yourself that there is some genuine phenomena that is unexplainable and does exist and affects people's lives? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a strange answer, answer here. When going in to investigate any kind of a claim, we aren't really given the luxury of believing or not believing. You have to stay neutral. Uh, now, on a personal level, I'm on the fence. I've had so many bizarre experiences that I haven't been able to come up with a rational explanation for yet. There's a possibility I will. And at the same time, you've got a lot of people out there making reports like this. You know, you have to cut through them one at a time to see, because even if one of them turned out to be real, how cool is that? We've I got mean, Brian. We've got Gene. We've got Randall. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. Hey, everyone. Proactive MD has an incredible offer for our radio listeners only. Stay tuned for our exclusive offer that includes a free charcoal pore cleansing brush and free shipping. Proactive MD with prescription strength adapalene can heal and prevent future breakouts. Today, for just $19.95, we're offering listeners the three-piece Proactive MD system with free shipping plus a free gift, the new charcoal pore cleansing brush. Get this exclusive offer by calling now, 1-800-583-8662 or go to proactive.com and enter promo code radio you heard right proactive md plus free shipping and a free gift the new charcoal pore cleansing brush you'll get all this for just $19.95 and their 60-day money-back guarantee you're guaranteed to get clear and stay clear or you get your money back call now 1-800-583-8662 that's 1-800-583-8662 or go to proactive.com and enter promo code radio again go to proactive.com and enter promo code radio Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Brian, not to interrupt you, but I will. You mentioned personal experiences there. Can you detail some of the things that might have happened to you that impressed you enough to think something weird was going on? Well, I think one of my favorites, we were at a private residence that had all sorts of interesting claims. One of the things that we do when we set up, and I really wish more people would do it, is going into the home, what we normally do is say, okay, where did this activity take place and we'll set up equipment around the area to monitor it and then 
us as the team back away from it and just let the family go along their normal daily lives like they were, keeping everything exactly like it was. So if for some reason it was something misinterpreted, we can find it. Or if it's something that caused something, we can find it. And going into people's homes and saying, okay, well, we're going to kick you out for the night and getting everything set up and turning out the lights, it makes no sense to me. One of the questions I always ask is we've all had, not all, a personal experience, say, of a ghostly type phenomena. How many of us had that happen while we were sitting in a completely pitch dark room? You didn't because you couldn't see anything. So in keeping things as normal as possible, we're trying to recreate that that entire experience. Now, we had this one house, like I say, everybody was having all sorts of experiences. And for some reason, there were multiple generations living in this house. We had a mother, two daughters, a granddaughter, and a father who was pretty much out of the picture. He was working all the time. And there was one room that was absolutely what they considered to be the most haunted room in the place, and it was a bedroom. So, of course, that's where they all decided to sleep. Why? I have no idea. But we sat up, and we'd been watching all night, and realized that these guys were sitting with us. And at one point, I said, how about you go in and go to bed? It's that time of night. We're going to be out here. Let me know if anything happens. And they kind of haggled about it for a while and decided that they were going to go sleep in shifts. So a couple of them went in and slept and an hour later they came out and the next group went in and they came out. And then two of them said, well, we'll go in and sleep. And they looked over at me and said, but only if you come in with us. To which I said, I, you know, if a big green thing jumps out of the closet, I'm jumping with you. But we can talk about it. So I went in and this is one of the few times that we did actually turn off all the lights because, well, they sleep in the dark and it had probably been a half hour or so. And the two in the bed were just snoring up a storm. I was sitting at the foot of the bed and we had an infrared camera in there so we could watch in the dark. And all of a sudden it felt like something was slapping my face. Not hard, just kind of an attention getting slap, but on the video, there's nothing except me looking like a complete moron trying to figure out what's slapping me in the dark. And to this day, I've tried to come up with some reasonable explanations for it, but I I haven't nailed anything yet. Interesting. What sort of paranormal detection equipment do you use? Well, and I think that that's a loaded question right there. Uh, if somebody says that they're using a device that was designed to find ghosts, I kind of question it because we don't really know what a ghost is per se. So how can I build something that's going to find it? You're kind of building a device that detects something that you don't know what it is, which on a scientific standpoint doesn't make sense. So what we tend to say is, We use equipment to document the location in all possible ways, uh, which does default to a lot of very typical what you would call ghost hunting equipment. Standard cameras, lots of video cameras, audio recording, um, the temperature, maybe not for the same reason as others. Like I say, a lot of audio. One of the other things that we've kind of... uh, We kind of started it, and it's being used differently nowadays, but we really were looking into seismometers as well to monitor for uh, extremely low vibrations because they can have some really bizarre effects on human physiology. But basically anything we can do to monitor the, the full spectrum of anything recordable to... See if we can record something if it is happening while we're there. So, in other words, you're talking about real uh, scientific instrumentation as opposed to what you were talking about before, like cell phone gadgets or 
uh, say something like, I remember we had one guest on and they were talking about something called a REM pod. And so I, I looked that up. I'm not sure if you know what I'm talking about, but it's a little electronic device that is supposed to give you an indication of whether or not some sort of a ghost or paranormal force is in a particular area where you set the thing. And I, I remember looking at it and thinking about the case and then looking at a picture of it and then going to the company site and noticing that it had a recall and a whole bunch of them for giving out false readings. Well, and how could you know it was giving off a false reading is my question. Uh, well, it, because it, the company that built it has certain testing procedures and there was a faulty chip in it or something. Oh. I was going to say, is there a testing procedure? They bring a ghost in to see if it sets it off or <laughs> no. how, how does yeah. that work? Yeah, uh, right. Exactly. I know exactly the piece of equipment and I'm using my air quotes there that you're talking about uh, because I have one sitting behind me. Uh, we don't use it. It was actually a prop from the Poltergeist remake. I acquired a ton of stuff from it and they used them in the movie. So that's one of the things that really helped uh, promote it. The thing is, we use lots of equipment that has real world use and part of what we require if you're going to be using any tool regardless of what it is is to get trained in how to use it and not for ghost hunting for what it was actually designed for so when you do get some sort of a uh, an unknown result you might be able to relate a little bit better to it if you know how the device works in the first place right you say in uh, uh, your experience that you're a certified thermal camera operator how does one go about getting certification for that uh there are a lot of independent places to do it and uh, several of the manufacturers offer the training too i'll, I'll kind of give you a, a thermal cameras are one of my favorites because they're actually coming down a lot right now you can get an adapter for your iphone at this point from them but you really need to be able to interpret the photographs uh these are used to take temperatures of things that are either hard to get to in environments that you wouldn't want to put people into or for example taking the temperature of the manifold of your car where you just don't want to touch it. You know, there's just lots of reasons for these. Now they don't put out a true photograph. Generally they put off this heat signature and it's to the point where the manufacturer, a couple of the manufacturers have a contest once a month that a user will send in two pictures. One will be the thermal photograph and one will be a regular photograph. And the contest is, what did I take a picture of? And these are things that are, these are people that use these every day in their regular nine to five. And they can't interpret standard items in photographs. But somebody that hasn't had training in it seems to think they can interpret what a ghost looks like. You know what? Let's stop it there and continue. In our next segment, we're trying to get a really realistic approach here with Brian on the paranormal. And Gene and Randall, you're in the Paracast. <laughs> Neighbors, we've made such a deal with HelloFresh, and it means that everyone listening to this show can receive $30 off your first week of deliveries when you go to HelloFresh.com and use the offer code PARACAST30. You know, with HelloFresh, you can choose the delivery day that works best for you. They've got a wide variety of chef-curated recipes that change weekly. And can you imagine me cooking Japanese panko chicken. It makes me feel like I'm a chef. It means also that you could actually get your meal cooked in 30 minutes. For busy people, this is perfect. The simple recipes include step-by-step -step instructions so even I can figure it out. Go to HelloFresh.com. Use the offer code PARACAST30 to get $30 off your first week of deliveries. HelloFresh.com. Let's talk tough. 
Let's talk comfort. Let's talk about down-home value. Made in the USA blue jeans like you wore as a kid. Remember? There's a place down in Tennessee Where they make blue diamond gusset jeans They so pride in every stitch Guarantee you love the way they fit Put a diamond gusset in the crotch where you need it most. Blue diamond gusset's got it. Others don't. For good old-fashioned comfort, get diamond gusset jeans. Every stitch guaranteed. In our Defender motorcycle jean comes Kevlar reinforced. See them at GUSSET.com. That's gusset.com. Or call 888-848-7738. That's 888-848-7738. Diamond gusset jeans got it. Others don't. Healthcare reform is confusing. With the loss of the Obamacare mandate, those needing help can now choose an affordable alternative. By joining Liberty HealthShare, you're part of a community of health-conscious Americans all over the country who control their own healthcare costs and choices. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It is an association of self-pay patients who unite with like-minded people to share the cost of their medical needs. Neighbor helping neighbor. Learn more now by going to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. If you owe money to the IRS, you need to hear this. The IRS is cracking down on those who owe back taxes. It starts with a devastating letter. And if you don't act immediately, you could find yourself having your wages garnished or have a lien placed on your property. But there's a solution. Tax 10,000 can help. Avoid enforced compliance, where these holds on your income and seizure of your home could become a nightmare that just won't end. Call 800-239-9957 now and speak to one of our experts. 800-239-9957 is the number to link you directly to a tax resolution specialist who will negotiate with the IRS on your behalf. Working through the IRS Fresh Start program, all the forms will be handled for you. All you have to do is make the toll-free call, 800-239-9957. Find out if you qualify and possibly save yourself thousands of dollars, not to mention a lot of headaches. It could be the best call you've made today. That number again, 800-239-9957. The service does not provide tax settlement or legal services. We will refer you to a company that does provide such services. Often the IRS will not agree to any reduction in the amount owed. Not all taxpayers who owe more than $10,000 will qualify for a tax reduction program. It's a no-brainer. A Big Berkey water filter is the one you need, period. You need a water filter that removes chlorine, fluoride, pharmaceuticals, BPA, and other endocrine disruptors, pesticides, bacteria, viruses, and much more, right? And does it all at only two cents per gallon. Get the original, most trusted name in gravity water filtration, Big Berkey. And now GCN listeners receive 5% off ceramic filter systems using code GCN. Call or click 1-877-99-BERKEY or BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So Randall is echo-free. Do we vote for an echo-free Randall or not? Send it to news at theparacast.com. That's ridiculous. I might put up a thread. Randall, put up a thread in the forum. Do we want an echo-free Randall or not? (laughs) Okay? Would you rather have him sound like Alvin of the Chipmunks? I can do that, too. Am I allowed to vote? No. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Brian, before we get back to you, I want to remind everybody that there are people on YouTube who say, why does the Paracast have so many commercials? And the reason is this is a commercial radio show on a real radio network. And we do offer a version of the show free of network ads on the Paracast Plus. For more information, go to plus.theparacast.com. Once again, that's plus.theparacast.com. Prices start just $1.49. But if you go for five years or a lifetime, you got free stuff. Brian, go ahead, please. Well, as I was saying with the the thermal imaging, people that use these in their regular nine to five jobs can't really interpret what a picture is of unless they've taken the photograph. So it's hard to have somebody that has no training to take a photograph and expect to identify something that we're not quite too sure what it is in the first place. Uh, A really good example of this, uh, back in 2002, I'm going to say, the Ghost Hunters TV show, I was, I'll say, fortunate enough uh, to be on an episode 
And one of the things that, that we were doing was playing with the thermal camera. We were in this kind of, well, closed down for the season uh, mountain lodge. And there was a big dining room. And as we were sweeping across the room, just kind of looking with the camera, we noticed by one of the doors, it looked to be that there was the figure of a person standing there, just slightly different temperature than the rest of the room. So, you know, they're terrified trying to figure out what it was. And I said, let's go walk up and figure out what it, you know, is there a ghost standing there? Well, the closer we got, the more we realized that it was an end table, a shelf with some stuff on it, and a lamp above it that formed the real basic crude silhouette of a person. But because it was out from the wall, it was a different temperature than the wall. You know, had somebody not gone forward and looked to figure out what it was and just kept walking, that could have easily been interpreted just as the shadow of a person or the spirit of a person standing there. And what did the show do with that? Did they take that and use that as a example um, of something that or did they use it at all they very, very briefly did it and uh strangely enough uh jason reenacted me in that portion of it and discovered what was causing it it's television that's what happens so when you're talking about the thermal cameras that would be infrared i'm assuming actually kind of you've got infrared cameras like you'd have your surveillance camera type stuff which it basically sees very slightly into the infrared and uses an infrared, usually LED, to illuminate the area. So when you've got your infrared cameras all over the place thinking that you're seeing in the dark, you're not. You're just illuminating it with a light that your eye can't see. The camera can. Now, the thermal cameras actually record differences in, and this is a really important part when you're using thermal cameras, they monitor or display differences in surface temperature. They have no ability whatsoever to record the temperature change inside of a room. The wall, the floor, the windows, yes. And we've tested them to the point of actually raising the temperature up to about 250 degrees, dropping it down to about minus 10, putting in smoke, steam, mist, everything we could think of. And thankfully, because of what these cameras are designed to do, they measured the wall. So when somebody says that they see something wandering through the room with one of these, it is, even by the manufacturer's admission, not something that's being interpreted properly. Okay, to clarify a little bit there, when you're saying that when the camera picks up something going through the room, it sounds to me like that should be something that you would think really is there because the camera isn't picking up just the ambient temperature of the air in the room, but is actually picking up a thermal signature from something that, that would be there. Well, the only thing that these cameras or even the thermal uh thermom or the you know like infrared thermometers the only thing that they can do is read relative surface temperatures so there has to be a relatively hard and or reflective surface to read that temperature um uh, a good example i don't remember it may have been on ghost hunters they had an episode that they were going through, I believe it was a locker room, and they thought they saw a ghost standing in front of one of the lockers, and that's kind of how it played out. But if you know how the camera works, what they were actually seeing was a reflection of the camera operator bouncing off of that mostly reflective surface of the locker. Uh, and think about it this way if these devices are used to check for extremely hot or extremely cold things that you really aren't supposed to touch because you're going to hurt yourself. So you use one of these before you grab hold of the manifold or you grab hold of the whatever it may be. If something in the air could be affecting it that didn't have a hard surface 
and we have the amount of ghosts that people claim we do, there'd be a lot of people out there hurting themselves. And there'd be a lot of professionals out there in law enforcement, the military, um, first responders of a lot of different types, uh, heating, air conditioning type workers. They should be reporting seeing a lot of ghosts wandering around in their daily jobs. And we don't see that. Okay, that's really interesting. Just to to further clarify then, so if I were to give a hypothetical example, suppose you had uh, a person that was wearing some sort of active camouflage that worked well enough that you couldn't see them in the visible light spectrum. Would this still pick them up on this camera? Uh, depending on what theoretical... Uh camouflage you're talking about such as the things that are doing like um they're discussing optical you know transferring from one side to the other to appear transparent absolutely because it would have a surface so while you may not be able to see the person visually you'd be able to see them thermally uh but at the same time you'd be able to go over and tap them on the shoulder because there would be a, a physical something in the room. And, you know, then we're going to the possibility, you know, that predator is a, a wonderful explanation of that. By the way, the next thing you hear will not be caused by a predator. Ah. Okay. Well, we've got Brian and Gene and Randall, you're in. The Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Hear that? That's the sound of a house being trashed while a gang of thieves ransack the place. And what they don't steal will be destroyed. This year, resolve not to be the next victim of a break-in. Go to faketv.com and discover a device that creates the illusion someone inside is watching TV, even when you're miles away. Security is a mindset, and fake TV should be part of your security solution. Be vigilant, but not fearful. faketv.com I'm David Hall, founder of Diamond Gusset, where we're proud of our 100% grown and sewn American-made jeans. Whether you're out for dinner, working on the farm, or on the road, Diamond Gusset Jeans offers a full spectrum of styles and sizes for any occasion. To find yours, visit gusset.com. That's G-U-S-S-E-T.com. Our loyal customers enable us to continue sponsoring Liberty Media outlets like the one you're listening to. In Liberty, David Hall, Diamond Gusset Jean Company. USA Radio News. Tropical Storm Florence has pretty much stalled over the Carolinas. Meteorologist John Quadriero says some places could be swamped by up to 40 inches. For us, by no means is the risk for flash flooding over. The potential for heavy rains will continue through tomorrow and into the first part of the upcoming week. The rain is expected to continue for days, which means more risk of flooding. Officials say they don't want anyone out in the streets when they can't see well because of the flooding and because of downed power lines. Also, with no power, there's no street lights. At least a dozen people have been killed. President Trump has approved making federal funding available in some counties. He plans a visit to the region next week. And Governor Roy Cooper says a little more than 20,000 people are staying at 150 shelters. You're listening to USA Radio News. This is an urgent health notice for all residents suffering from back, neck, knee, and wrist pain. You may qualify for a pain-relieving brace at little or no cost to you, but the deadline is fast approaching. Simply call the Health Alert Hotline now. You heard right. You may qualify for a pain-relieving back, neck, knee, or wrist brace. These items may even be covered by Medicare or your private insurance. The Health Alert Hotline is your brace company. These specialized braces have been tested for pain relief. Call us toll-free right now to determine 
determine your eligibility and to learn how to use your private insurance or Medicare to minimize your out-of-pocket cost. Don't wait. If the deadline passes, you may lose your opportunity to get a pain-relieving back, neck, knee, or wrist brace at little or no cost to you. 800-296-1261. 800-296-1261. 800-296-1261. That's 800-296-1261. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, the inventor of my pillow. And like all of you out there, I had problems sleeping. Pillows would go flat. I would flip flop all night long. I would wake up with a sore neck, maybe a headache, or feel like I needed a nap, even though I slept eight hours. When I invented my pillow, I wanted it to where you could move the patented fill to give you the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of sleep position. My pillow will get you into that deep REM sleep faster, and you will stay there longer. It's not about how much time we spend in bed; it's about how much of that quality sleep we get. I do all of my own manufacturing right here in the United States. I have a 10-year warranty. You can wash and dry my pillow, and I give you a 60-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. And here's my best offer ever. You can buy one of my pillows and get one absolutely free. Go to MyPillow.com or call 800-870-0305 and use promo code GCN. That's MyPillow.com or 800-870-0305 with promo code GCN. Hi, this is nuclear physicist lecturer Stanton Friedman. You are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We've got Randall, we've got Gene, and our special guest this week is a level-headed guy, Brian Bonner, who explores the unknown, part of the Rocky Mountain... Paranormal Research Society. Brian, before we go on, tell us about the society. Is this something that's just a private group, or do you actually take members? Uh, A little of both. It's an odd group that we only bring in people that we need for the specific investigation. Because we've got a large group of people with different skill sets. For example, if we need somebody that's a medical doctor, well, we've got somebody we can call. If we need somebody that's a geologist, we've got somebody we can call. A physicist, we've got somebody we can call. So if it's some sort of a, a profession that we think we might be able to apply, that's how the group grows. And depending on the investigation, the, the core members can change. We're always looking for you know the, the right new people, too. So. You guys are based in Colorado, right? Exactly. We're in the Denver metro area. Okay. And so that's where most of your investigations take place. Uh, That's as far as the wallet usually lets us go. You say in your uh, experience on your bio again that that you've got experience in historical research. Uh, Can you give us an example of how your historical research has helped in uh, any of your paranormal investigations? Well, historic research, I think, is a really important piece that a a lot of people are missing. And I'll I'll give you one of my favorite examples of that. Uh, There was a location that we went to for about 15 years. And we had kind of free run of this reportedly haunted inn. And the main story was... There was the ghost of the original owner's son who had died of some sort of a lung condition who now haunts the third floor of the inn and runs back and forth and plays with a ball and all of the things that you'd expect to hear out of every haunted hotel. So the thing is, before we say, okay, let's go find the ghost of the little boy, let's see if the little boy existed in the first place. You know, was there ever a child that the original owners had there? Did they have a son? Did they have a daughter? Did they even have kids? It took about, I'm going to say, three years of going through microfilm in a little mountain town library. But we finally found a 1922 obit for the original owner's son who had died at the location of pneumonia. Now... 
that doesn't prove it's a ghost, but that's a really, you know, a, a huge piece in pointing towards at least where the stories came from. And if it is a ghost, hey, at least, you know, now we've got some sort of a story behind it. Very interesting. Uh, you say that sometimes you uh, employ or seek out the help of other professional scientists, such as uh, perhaps geologists. Uh, how would a geo- geologist help you in pi- paranormal research? You'd be amazed at the strange fields we bring into this. Um, I'll, I'll give you two examples. Uh, the The one that comes to mind to start with is, are you familiar with a place called Cheeseman Park? Not me. Well, Cheeseman Park is a place that two mo- uh, movies were actually based off of. Uh, the Changeling with George C. Scott and the original Poltergeist. And the really short version of it is it was Denver's original cemetery. And because of political and other problems, it was shut down and they moved to a new location. But in a lot of the cases, in roughly two to 5,000 of the cases, they didn't move the bodies. They just put in a part. Ah, yes. I remember that from Poltergeist. Exactly. Well, that's one of the two locations that the story came from. Well, the thing is, in investigating it, we found that a lot of the original caskets seem to be popping up in locations that weren't originally cemetery. Or they'd find them and they were vertical instead of horizontal or at the wrong depth they're just all sorts of things that didn't make sense so i called up one of our geologists and i said we've got to figure this out can you help and they said okay where is it did a little research and it turns out and if you know anybody that lives in colorado they'll know this wonderful type of clay called bentonite when it gets wet it kind of turns into a river underground And a large portion of what was the cemetery and the surrounding area are made out of this specific clay. So what has happened is every time it rains, it lets these caskets shift around to the point that they've actually had body parts popping up two to three blocks outside of the original cemetery boundaries. (laughs) But without the help of a geologist that could tell me a legitimate reason for it, what kind of an explanation could you come up with other than they're moving around down there? So it's it's a way to to apply some some common sense to it. Another one, and it's one of our probably biggest cases. uh, Let's see who's not familiar with the Stanley Hotel. I, that's what I thought I'd hear. Yeah, right. Do tell. I'm, we're more UFO oriented here. So this uh, is really interesting. You're the expert. If you go to the, our uh, website, not to promote the website or anything, but uh, in the investigations section, there's a whole bunch about the Stanley Hotel that you'd probably find quite interesting. However, we got involved in a documentary that was supposed to be about the ghosts. And they said, you know, we need a local paranormal research team. Would you guys come in? And we said, well, sure. That's a great location. We'll, we'll help. And mid-production, we discovered that it's not necessarily about the ghosts. It's about the, what they call Stanley effect. The large deposits of quartz, lime, or sorry, yeah, quartz, limestone, and magnetite underneath the property in the mountain that are causing some sort of a piezoelectric effect that are letting the ghosts manifest, which I kind of fall back to where I was with the explanation of the little boy at the the inn that died of pneumonia. Before we jump to the conclusion that it's this weird electromagnetic effect causing the ghosts to appear, how about we see what's actually under the hotel? So I traced the sources, and it actually turns out that it was the TV show Ghost Hunters that came up with that explanation and I contacted them and they got all of their real heavy duty research, uh, from the guy that was working at the gift shop. So (laughs) that wasn't exactly really heavy duty research. Okay. Just a minute, folks, just a minute, folks. So 
if we go to a place that doesn't have a gift shop, we go to the pizza joint. Exactly. What we ended up doing, I'm like, okay, I need to find out who's in charge of soil surveys. Kind of in a long run, I discovered that it's the U.S. Department of Agriculture that's in, char- in charge of monitoring soil samples throughout the country. So I got a hold of them, and after lots of emails and jokes and things back and forth, they asked if, well, first they told me, we don't know what's underneath the Stanley Hotel because we've never been there. There's never been a soil survey there. But they did have a geomagnetic satellite survey of the area, which showed no anomalies whatsoever. And at that point, I thought, you know, well, we're not sure, but at least I can tell them, stop talking about that because we don't know what's under there. But as luck would have it, the Department of Agriculture got back a hold of me and asked if we could get them into the hotel. And that's where we're going to give you a cliffhanger, ladies and gentlemen. What did the Department of Agriculture tell our little crew here as we try to find the signal from the noise in ghost experiences? Too much noise out there, I think. Brian, Gene, and Randall, you're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists, get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Has your body ever gone low blood sugar feeling weak, shaky, knowing you better eat something fast? We all know high blood sugar can lead to many metabolic problems. At GCNteam.com, we have a healthy blood sugar pack, focusing on the structure and function of stable blood sugar. Find us at GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. Nothing feels worse than unstable blood sugar. Call 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. Broadcasting to over a thousand radio stations, GCN programming is in all of the largest markets. A GCN advertising career could be the business opportunity you've been waiting for. Companies need hardworking representatives just like you to handle their needs, while you earn residual income which can last for years. Companies are buying and they need you. Email advertise at GCNlive.com or call 877-996-4327. That's 877-996-4327. Message and data rates may apply. Individual results may vary. See website for details. But hey, I'm buying a huge flat screen TV so I can finally see it without my glasses. Why not just get LASIK at the LASIK Vision Institute? That's what I'm doing. Uh, My glasses and contacts are a pain. I'd love to finally get rid of these, but who can afford LASIK? You can. Because the LASIK Vision Institute is offering dramatically low prices and an absolutely free consultation. Just text DO33 to 350350. The LASIK Vision Institute has already performed over a million procedures. They use the latest FDA-approved LASIK technology that helps the majority of patients achieve 20-20 vision for a fraction of what others charge. 
Better vision, better value. The LASIK Vision Institute. Make this the year you finally get LASIK. For a free consultation plus an extra 20% discount, text 233 to 350350. You'll see for free if LASIK is right for you. That's D O 33 to 350350. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest price filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. You know what we should do, Randall? We should buy up a bunch of these or work with a manufacturer to sell genuine Randall Paracast echo machines. There is actually a musical instrument company called Randall already. Uh Uh-oh. They'll sue us for trademark. Brian, go ahead, please. As I was saying, the Department of Agriculture had uh, contacted us asking if we could get them into the hotel to complete a survey. Now, let me see if I can explain this in a little more detail. The U.S. government was asking us, the little paranormal team, if they could get permission to go to the hotel i have no idea why they thought we needed to be the intermediary however we're crazy and we'll do anything so it turns out that uh, got them in so we spent two days spending a lot of tax money on ground penetrating radar electromagnetic induction guys digging in the dirt uh and not just at the stanley but a bunch of the adjoining properties too We have a real government report that says paranormal research team on it, which I think is just golden on its own. But after all of this research, we discovered that those minerals are not underneath the hotel. So I had to go back to them and say, "Okay, you have beautiful ghost stories. You have all these wonderful experiences. You have this amazing history. Stop it with this really dumb mineral thing. And it obviously didn't work because a year to the day or a date of the year after that, the ghost adventurers were there and the hotel's paranormal expert explained how the minerals underneath the hotel caused all of the ghosts. (laughs) Oh, that must be so so frustrating. Oh, it it is. And, you know, another example of bringing people in uh, kind of back to the Cheeseman Park thing. Back in 2010, because they were working on some of the irrigation system, uh, inadvertently unearthed five bodies. And we ended up, because we knew the history of the park and the ghost stories and all this, I was like, I want to get in and document these bodies. Not even necessarily for the ghost portion of it, just for the historic aspect of it. And the minute that the medical examiner heard that it was a paranormal group that was doing it, she pretty much hung up on us. Uh, So we had to call back and promise that we were going to bring in a forensic anthropology group to study these bones, to see, you know, possibly who they were, what they did, what they died of, and be able to add a story to these people that had been unearthed. And she fell for it. So we got to spend a day with the bodies and we did bring in the forensics team. And that was another one that you learn a lot when you're doing things like that. And you never think that forensic anthropology, geology, these things aren't anything that you'd ever come up with when you're thinking about, well, I want to be a paranormal investigator. What exactly do I need to know? Well, that's fabulous because it can then lead people who are interested in the phenomena, if they look at it from a responsible point of view, into genuine science. And that can be just as fascinating, if not more fascinating, than the subject itself. Oh, it can be. And I think that only through the use of testable, legitimate science 
are we ever going to be able to say one way or the other what's actually going on? You know, like I say, it could be a personal experience, and that's wonderful. But that personal experience doesn't mean anything to anybody that either isn't into it for the belief or wasn't there. I mean, I can tell you that last night I walked out back of my house and there was a 65 foot long cigar shaped blinking object in my backyard. Who are you to say that there wasn't? But there's no proof of it. So it falls back into being a personal experience again. But then again, well, when we get into the concept of proof, then what is proof to you? How do you define that term? I would say give me the body, but that's hard to do with a ghost. In order to meet the qualifications, we need something that is repeatedly testable. Dead grandma only walks through the living room once in that entire span of somebody living in the home. I can't repeat that. I can't say it was for sure this. And And how would you even know, Brian? How would you know if you saw something you thought was the dead grandmother? And she was there monthly, not once in 46 years. How would you know it's her? We wouldn't. I mean, there's so many other, uh, how can I put this, science fiction explanations that, you know, drag into science fact eventually. You know, could it be something interdimensional? Could it be something recorded? Could it be something projected mass delusion? You know, there's all of these things that, like I say, they go into the realm of science fiction, but they're just as credible as most of the paranormal explanations. But how can we get verifiable, scientifically valid material evidence if the phenomena is immaterial? Um, Morons like me go out into the field and keep beating our heads on rocks until we come up with the right answer. (laughs) (laughs) What keeps you at it? What keeps you going? Honestly, it's the experiences that I get to have. It's the the ghost stories that I told because, you know, I'm still a huge fan of the ghost stories. The ability to do the historic research, which in school I hated history. Now I'm the biggest history buff that I know. And it's so intriguing to learn the past of a lot of these places, especially we get to go to places that most people don't. Or if they do, they only get to go there for a brief period of time under heavy guard. And for me, it's it's really kind of a, a, an amazing thing. But at the same time, I kind of ask people not to do it. We've gone to places, there was a courthouse that we went to locally that was the county seat for a very large area here. And they wanted us to come look at their paranormal claims. We showed up Friday afternoon and they threw the keys at us and said, we'll be back Sunday night. This is all the county records. This is all of, I mean, just everything. And we're nobody. Why are they handing it to us? People do that with their businesses, with their homes. And thankfully, you know, everybody that we've worked with has been credible and not somebody that's going to cause a problem but unfortunately the world's not full of just that so when people say you know have my house for the weekend there must be a ghost i think twice one thing that bothers me also when we're talking about the ghost thing when you have these ghost hunting tv shows we won't mention any particular names they seem to always find something and you wonder how can you do that How can just some random crew of TV actors, producers, whatever, go into a place, set up the camera, and my God, there it is. Really? There's multiple uh, answers to that question. The, The thing is, and I tell this to people, that when they legitimately think there's something going on in their homes, I always ask them, keep a diary. Because I want to see if there's any kind of a pattern to this, because what people perceive as happening all the time usually isn't. They're just afraid. So it seems like it's happening all the time. So if I go in for an eight hour period on one Friday in the entire span that they've lived in this house, the odds of me 
even encountering them at home are statistically really low. So you have to find a way to be able to at least try to be there for the event, if at all possible. Now, with the TV shows, uh, I'm, I'm not going to use any names here, but I'll, I'll, I'll pretend that it might be called Ghost Hunters. For the first couple of seasons, really didn't find anything. And it was it was not bad. I mean, you know, there were some questionable things, but generally they were they were following some pretty good scientific protocols. The problem was the public was getting a little bored with it. And during one of their investigations, a couple of things happened that were easily explainable and explainable by the people that were there. If you talk to them away from the cameras. But they aired it with pretty much no explanation. Not really saying, oh, it's a ghost, but they didn't say it wasn't. And that's when it was discovered that if you show up with anything that appears to be paranormal evidence, people tune in. Okay, we've answered the big question there. We should have more. No, we don't do that in the Paracast. More to come with Brian, (laughs) Randall, and Gene. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive PowerCast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the PowerCast Jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a PowerCast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.thepowercast.com, store.thepowercast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the PowerCast. You go to store.thepowercast.com, stop by, and take a shopping tour. It's been said, any society is only three missed meals away from chaos. Those times may be near. Think about it. Our country faces multiple terrorist threats and aggressions from Russia and North Korea. Social unrest and violent marches yet again may lead to looting of stores and city shutdowns. And our crumbling infrastructure leaves our power grid vulnerable to long-term outages from a single cyber attack. When the chaos from any one of these threats arises, the government knows it can't provide during a widespread national emergency. That's why you need your own plan for self-reliance. That's where My Patriot Supply comes in. Get a four-week survival food supply for only $99. That includes breakfast, lunches, and dinners. Order online at preparewithgcn.com. 99 bucks for four weeks of survival food that tastes like homemade cooking and lasts up to 25 years from My Patriot Supply. Get your kits today at preparewithgcn.com. Free shipping is included. Preparewithgcn.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Randall's not a ghost. That's a fake echo. That's a dollar ninety-eight echo chamber that he can buy from the dollar store, wherever he is, or not, or one of those stores. And maybe we'll make a deal and offer those things. But then you can do that digitally. I can do it digitally. I can do things. Okay, so... I was looking at an upgrade, yeah. I saw one over at the uh, Superstore. It has, like, a bunch of extra buttons on it you can push. Okay, so, Brian, the point being here, the TV show producers see, if we see something, we discover something in an episode, people come back and watch. What's going to happen next week? And it's kind of like the story of somebody who has a UFO experience. And people hear that and they're impressed and they want them to have an experience next week. And somehow 
they may be encouraged to do that. We think of that in the terms of the UFO contactees. I'm going to ask you about abductions later. So the implication here is the producers of the TV reality show, we can call it Ghost Hunters if we want, will be inspired to create a docu-fiction kind of reality show. Absolutely. And, you know, that's one of the things when the network comes to you and goes, hey, the ratings are going up and the selling the advertising say the, you know, this is really a hot thing right now. But in order to keep this, we need to keep finding things. Hint, hint. Money talks. I mean, if you get a good name in the paracelebre TV world, you're not going to be a millionaire, but you're not going to be hurting either. So it's in your best interest to play along. And you don't feel that you've been swayed in any particular direction by the lure of financial gain in this. You're in it for the truth and to try and figure out what's really going on. Well, I'll, I'll say I really like to find the truth, even if it's not paranormal in nature, because it's, it's fun solving a mystery. However, I have turned down a couple of TV shows because looking at the contracts, I specified no faking of anything, and it kind of goes away at that point. Interesting. Returning for a moment to the uh, geological explanations for some of this, have you heard of a Canadian researcher by the name of Michael Persinger? Yep. So who just died recently. That's right. We lost him not that long ago. I'm in Canada. And uh, what do you think of some of his work? I really like Dr. Persinger's work. Towards the end, I'm thinking he may have been getting a little delusional because he was talking about some things that uh, everybody's got their points, I guess. But back to the God Helmet. It was an interesting study. I've read tons about it, gone through all the white papers, and we've actually had a couple of cases that I believe were completely related to his research. One of them, we had a home that there were two very, very elderly women living in. They were both in their early 90s. I'll just give you this portion of the investigation. They claimed that there were giant, what appeared to be grasshoppers walking through the house at night. And they were terrified of them. Well, during the investigation, I took out a EMF meter and started just kind of sniffing around the house to see what was going on and found out in the older sister's bedroom, there was a uh, CPAP machine because she had sleep apnea. It was throwing off an electromagnetic field that was honestly unsafe for anybody. And it was always on. In order to get around some of the underwriter laboratory's rules, they only switched the low voltage side. The high voltage side was always there. So I brought these two women into the room and I said, how long have you been having these experiences? And they said, well, it's been probably about three months. I said, okay. And it only happens generally in the area of this room, correct? They said, yeah. I said, the CPAP machine over here, how long have you had it? I said, about three months. And I said, okay, I want to run an experiment. I said, I'm going to put, I put a power strip instead of a 90-year-old woman having to bend over and unplug a machine. I gave her a switch. And I said, tonight, I want you to leave this machine turned off. Don't kill your sister if she's gagging, turn it on, but if possible, leave it out throughout the night. The following night, turn it back on. We'll be back in three days. So we came back and I said, so how did it go? She said, the second night, horrifying. There's, you know, the, the typical things going on, but the first night they slept like babies. She's like, what happened? What's the deal? Well, you have to realize that you're dealing with somebody in their 90s who's probably not as cognitive as you would hope. So I just explained to her that the machine was basically short-circuiting her brain to make her 
believe she was seeing ghosts or seeing these big crickets. And I said, what I want you to do is call your insurance company and explain to them that this machine is way too loud and neither one of you can sleep and you want a different model. And she said, well, why don't I tell them that it's making this happen? I said, no, because both of us will end, end up being questioned over the whole thing. Just tell them it's too loud. She did. They got a new machine in that had almost no electromagnetic field coming off of it. And they were both happy and went, among, went along with you know their lives. So it really fell back to Persinger's experiments of we had two people that had, you know, probably pretty degraded brains at the point that they were in their 90s. They weren't, you know, in their prime. And the cultural bias, apparently they were afraid of bugs. So two and two together, they saw these giant bugs wandering through the house at night. We took the source of the electromagnetic field away. And now we have two very happy women. Very interesting. So you also say in your experience that you um, have experience in electromagnetic field study. So did you take some special courses for that? Uh, I actually got certified uh, a couple of times for doing electromagnetic field surveys for broadcast equipment for human exposure. Uh, oh, really interesting. So can, maybe can you tell us a little bit more about that and say, could the effects of something like uh, cell phones or or cordless telephones, which give off a lot more EM, or at least definitely in the old days, how, how would they compare to something like the the field that this apnea machine was giving off? Uh, the, the field that thing was giving off was insane. Now, we did have another case where it was similar. It was a younger group of people, but in taking a meter into their house, I discovered, and they should have told me off the bat, there was a new cellular antenna site that was, I'd say, probably 15 feet away from the head of their bed in the alley. And whenever they went in and went to bed, the, the ghosts would happen. And we've also noticed that it happens based on a, a, well, just like Persinger did, based on a cultural bias, too. If they're expecting ghosts, they get ghosts. If they're expecting bugs, they get bugs. If they're expecting aliens, well, sure enough, we've got green people at the end of the bed. So the amount that it takes, and I think Persinger really was having a problem with that, too. It depends on the condition of the person's brain. There's a lot of, you know, variables in there. We've got another variable here, but I want to ask about that. That raises a key question about perceptions of different things with regard to paranormal phenomena and the expectations of what you're going to see. It's something that we've been talking about. Also, co-creation. I don't know if Brian's heard the co-creation theory about UFOs. But we can get into that as well. J. Randall Murphy, Gene Steinberg, Brian Bonner, who's here for the first time and has kind of a really, really healthy, skeptical approach to paranormal research. You're in the Paracast. Attack of the Rockoids has been well-received by critics and readers alike. It's a -a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. 
It's been said, any society is only three missed meals away from chaos. Those times may be near. Think about it. Our country faces multiple terrorist threats and aggressions from Russia and North Korea. Social unrest and violent marches yet again may lead to looting of stores and city shutdowns. And our crumbling infrastructure leaves our power grid vulnerable to long-term outages from a single cyber attack. When the chaos from any one of these threats arises, the government knows it can't provide during a widespread national emergency. That's why you need your own plan for self-reliance. That's where My Patriot Supply comes in. Get a four-week survival food supply for only $99. That includes breakfast, lunches, and dinners. Order online at preparewithgcn.com. $99 bucks for four weeks of survival food that tastes like homemade cooking and lasts up to 25 years from My Patriot Supply. Get your kits today at preparewithgcn.com. Free shipping is included. Preparewithgcn.com. No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-318-1251. That's 800-318-1251. 800-318-1251. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Since you mentioned here that, depending on your expectations, Brian, you may see ghosts, you may see UFOs, you may see aliens. Does that explain some of these UFO abductions? Oh, I think it absolutely does. Now, does it explain the bulk of them? Probably not, because I think it's probably a pretty a small set to work from when it comes to people that are, A, susceptible to these types of electromagnetic fields and B, actually near them to have that happen. So does it happen? Uh, absolutely, I've seen it. Is it the main cause? Probably not. But the thing is, there's lots of different little things like this that kind of accumulate into looking like a larger phenomena, which may actually be associated with something completely different. But we have to be able to, you know, cut through the small stuff to find out what the big stuff might be. And I'll I'll go to a place that everybody in the paranormal world, be it UFO or ghosts, really hate is sleep paralysis. It has the same cultural bias that the exposure to electromagnetic fields does. What you're expecting is generally what you get. Okay. If, if we could s- stick, just before we move on to that, w- with the electromagnetic hypersensitivity, that's a pretty contentious topic. But 
well, some reports more recently are they're actually pulling routers out of elementary schools because of it. Now, the World Health Organization has actually reversed its previous opinion and on uh, the use of wireless technology. So how much EM does something like a router give off compared to, say, this lady's apnea machine? Oh, absolutely negligible compared to the the sleep apnea machine. And uh, one of the things, and the electromagnetic sensitivity, that's something that I've actually done quite a bit of looking into. And you can run into two things. First of all, it's radiation. The minute you say radiation, people freak out. And they need to learn the difference between ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. That that if you can get that part through, it helps. But then the electromagnetic sensitivity type thing, if it's studied properly, all of the and I hate to use the word credible tests that have gone through, you know, at least a double blind where they'll put people into a cage that can't pass through a signal and they'll put them in a room with a router and these people will have a reaction well they haven't actually turned the router on there's just a box sitting in the room it seems to be a a psychological condition more than anything else not to say that it's not possible for people to have that but even barring wi-fi We've had radio signals bombarding us, TV signals bombarding us. I mean, even the sun itself is throwing so much electromagnetic noise at us that if people were truly sensitive to that, this would have been a phenomenon forever. Wi-Fi really hasn't added that much to it, or cell phones really haven't added that much to it. There's, it's, it's. The floor is up a little higher than it used to be, but in comparison to you have a cell phone that's giving off five watts. You have an AM broadcast station a mile away that's giving off 200,000 watts. Well, that AM station's been there forever, but up until they had a cell phone, they weren't freaked out about it. And by the way, just to put things in perspective, I used to work very close to some of those AM radio stations. Not 200,000 watts, 5,000 watts, 10,000 watts, and my brain hasn't been fried yet. Some will dispute that. <laughs> now, the, the one phenomenon I did experience with uh, being close to a radio station once is the uh, telephones would pick up the signal. You could actually pick up the phone and listen to the local radio station, which I thought was fun. But, yeah, as far as the, the sensitivity, I think that one is... I would say still out, but I think they're kind of disproving it. But the overwhelming electromagnetic fields, there's certain parts of the brain. You know, it's normally the the temporal lobe that's being affected by this. And I think Persinger pretty pretty much nailed that, too. So I think you're looking at two different things when it comes to that. So what I'm seeing here overall is that you feel strange things are going on. But most of these experiences have conventional explanations. Am I right? Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to ask you about that. In terms of UFOs, the ones that can't be explained in the way you've described, what do you think they are? Spaceships, interdimensional, what? Well, the answer is, let's go back to the word UFO. I think it's a wonderful word. Unidentified. Not alien, but just unidentified. Uh, and it, it kind of covered in a few different ways. First of all, our, our military and everybody else's military, and usually, for the right reasons, keeps a lot of things secret from the public because it's in the best interest of national security. So we have lots of technology, uh, a lot of airborne technology that you and me, Joe Public, don't know about. I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example. The SR-71 spy plane. That thing came out in the, well, technically late 50s, but I'll say early 60s. And up until the late 70s, nobody really knew much about it. It was an, a legend. So they're wonderful at keeping secrets about things like that when they have to. 
And if we see some sort of a test aircraft, uh, the more and more drones are getting popular. I know I was just with a film crew a couple of weeks ago that was using one. They're everywhere. Uh, but we also have a lot of really weird atmospheric phenomena that people don't understand. You have like sprites that a, a really unusual thing. You get a lot of... Uh, Things like the aurora moving farther and farther south, depending on the electromagnetic activity of the sun, which I hear we're having right now. I should try and check that out. But there's so many things that can be misinterpreted, just as in the ghost hunting world, that if you're going out intentionally looking for that one thing, you're so set in doing it that you're not really open to the explanation of it being anything else. I've worked a few UFO cases. I'm not the expert, just like I say with any of this stuff. So we would bring in and talk to people that were experts in searching for extraterrestrials, things like that, to kind of get the idea of if they are here, why would they be? Why would I show up in some guy's backyard for five minutes, freak him out and leave? It just doesn't seem that good of a reason. And if you look at things like Frank Drake and the Drake equation, potentially there's billions of life forms out there but then if you start looking at the amount of time that we've had since the origin of time how long it would take for something to evolve into a state where it would have travel across the universe let's travel across these announcements with brian gene and randall you're in the paracast are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Most of you know that heart disease is the number one silent killer in the U.S. What if I told you for just $54.95 a month you could fight against heart disease naturally? At Heart and Body Extract, we've been helping thousands of people get back to a healthier heart. Don't just take my word for it. Check out all of the success stories at hpextract.com. Or to order, call 866-295-5305. That's 866-295-5305. hpextract.com. Don't risk it when you can take charge of it. This is Fred. Uh, hi, I'm Fred. Fred's a repeater. I tend to repeat. Fred has a business. I do have a business. And a problem. Fred repeats the same tired advertising over and over, and now it doesn't work. Over and over. But Fred is about to see a vision. I'm seeing a vision. Advertising on the Genesis Communications Network is the smart way for Fred to reach his potential customers with the most affordable national advertising rates, period. Get started today with GCN, the Genesis Communications Network. Just email advertise at GCNlive.com. USA Radio News with Chris Barnes. Florence has been downgraded to a tropical depression as of 5 a.m. Eastern. The National Weather Service reports it's no longer a tropical storm, now packing maximum sustained winds of 35 miles an hour. And the center of the storm is about 20 miles southwest of Columbia, South Carolina, but still dumping buckets of rain on the southeast, especially the Carolinas. The Fayetteville mayor said late yesterday... If you are refusing to leave during this mandatory evacuation, then you need to do things like notify your legal next of kin because the loss of life is very possible. At least 13 storm-related deaths have been attributed to the storm. Also, hundreds of thousands remain without power, some areas having seen up to 30 inches of rain already, and it will likely continue for days. This is USA Radio News. There's no question you need omega-3s. But which form should you take? Fish oil or krill oil? Scientists have debated this for years. Luckily, there's a new solution to satisfy everyone. It's called Krill Omega 50 Plus. It combines ultra-pure fish oil and joint soothing krill oil together in just one tiny pill. It's so powerful, it can promote the health of your heart and your arteries. And if that wasn't enough, it can also boost your joint comfort in just days. We're so sure Krill Omega 
Omega 50 Plus will work for you. We'll even send you a free bottle to put to the test. The debate is over. It's not fish oil or krill oil. It's both. And now it's free. Just pay $4.95 for shipping and claim your free bottle. Call now. 1-800-399-6392. 1-800-399-6392. That's 1-800-399-6392. Message and data rates may apply. Please don't text while driving. If you've been in business more than 20 minutes, you've probably printed your logo on all kinds of promotional products. We all know logos work because they're on everything from the top of skyscrapers to the bottom of shoes. Ever wondered why or how to best use your logo to grow your business? Let us show you today for free. We're 4imprint, promotional product experts at your service. We're giving away the latest issue of Amplify, the digital magazine that reveals promotional product success stories absolutely free to everyone who texts UP77 to 88988. At 4 Imprint, we make your logo look perfect on thousands of promotional items. With our 100% guarantee, it'll be right the first time, on time, every time. Your free e-magazine will reveal invaluable insights that can attract new customers, build your brand, and grow your business. Get the latest issue of Amplify absolutely free by texting UP77 to 88988. That's UP77 to 88988. This is Micah Hanks of the Gray Alien Report, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. So we mentioned Brian jumping across space, finding a way to go from one star system to another. Did we talk about wormholes, stargates, warp drive? What? Well, and that's the thing is these are all mostly theoretical. In in the big scheme of things, in order for something to have gotten here from that great distance, a a lot of the, the bigger brains than I'll ever have have said, if they do come here, Oh, we're in trouble. We are so low on the the intelligence scale, on the evolution scale. Would they even notice us? Because we're just starting to scrape the surface when it comes to our technology. People are saying, you know, well, they're noticing us because we're starting to use nuclear weapons. Well, I think in the grand scheme of things, nuclear weapons are probably not really that big of a deal. There's a, a lot worse that could be done. But... Like I say, in the in the time that it takes for something to evolve to the point where they have the capability to get here, and then the time to do that, we're not even sure that there's been enough time for that to happen. Now, if there has, wouldn't you think that it would announce itself to us? Unless you go with some of the other theories of, you know, it's it's some sort of a something that created us and we're a zoo or it's testing us or things like that, which you know, it's great concepts, but unless there's an accident, we're never going to know that for sure. What about things like Bigfoot? What about things like the ghosts again? People think they are spirits of the dead. And what about those abductions? Well, you know, somebody brought up an interesting thing I was listening to not long ago about conspiracies. And they said that, you know, this is one of the times that Bigfoot, especially the cryptids, things like that, are the most believable of the bunch because we know, for example, big hairy primates exist. We have some. We, we, we are some. So while it may not be what we're seeing out there, at least we know that that exists. We, we have some sort of of a baseline to run it off of when it comes to any of the rest of the paranormal we're still grasping at straws we don't have barring any weird conspiracy cover-up stuff any proof of any other paranormal anything that's a hundred percent credible it would be great if we do and that's why we keep looking for things and that's why we keep doing the research but think of and i'll, I'll give you two examples here i'll ask a question What do you think that the worldwide repercussions would be if we came up with absolutely conclusive proof of ghosts or extraterrestrials that had visited here? 
Well, I think there's a real important distinction to make between the two, because in principle, alien visitation, particularly interstellar travel, there's nothing in science that says that that can't happen or that it's not possible. However, with ghosts, if we're dealing with, uh, say, the usual interpretation that it represents a person in some afterlife, that seems to be impossible. So it, it's not it's not the same thing at all. Oh, no, not at all. But I think those are the two pieces of paranormal research that have the most far reaching effect. If we could prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that you know, E.T. has been walking around in the field for the past 20 years, that's earth shattering. I mean, all, all of our. I would say science would have to realign a little bit to figure out what was going on because we've come up with proof of something that, you know, it, it's going to move us so much farther ahead in technology. So a huge deal. Now, in the ghost side, and I, it, it, it sounds rather egotistical to say this, but if I came up tomorrow and said, I've absolutely proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that life exists after you die. And I know this because I've talked to my great, great, great grandfather who died 150 years ago. This ghost would be able to pass through a lot of information. World religions would not be happy because somebody's going to be wrong. I don't know if I want to be in the world where that happens because it, it could get ugly. I mean, or it could be a complete new renaissance. I don't know. Well, but like Gene pointed out earlier, there's no way to provide sufficient evidence that a ghost is somebody's dead relative. It could simply be something else masquerading as that. There, There is, however, a way to provide scientifically verifiable material evidence for something like an alien craft. It's possible to do that. I mean, oh, I'm not saying that we have that now in our own, in our hands, in the public domain, but at least we know that that's something that's possible. Right. But, and, pr- but proving an apparition is actually someone's dead relative, that's not possible. Well, There's, and I don't want to jump on the believer's side, but in staying completely skeptical, I can't say it's not impossible, highly improbable. How would you prove it then? If I mean, I, I've thought about I, this a lot, and I well, cannot think of a way that it's provable. And I think the answer is, and it may be that we find out an answer that's completely not ghostly, but we find the answer for the bulk of things that we haven't been able to explain as technology advances. Because we, like I was saying a minute ago, are kind of scratching the surface when it comes to our our ability in, in science and technology. We're, we're crawling out of the mud right now. Things are moving at a good pace, but who's to say a hundred years from now, we don't prove that, okay, the ghosts were, it wasn't ghosts. It was interdimensional something, or it was, you know, something we were misinterpreting because our cultural bias said that it was a ghost. That is entirely possible. That That's a point that I've been trying to get across to other people I've talked to about ghost hunting and ghost hunters. It's almost as if they just switch off at that point. Well, no, it has to be you know, afterlives, you know, roaming dead people. It can't be anything else. Otherwise, it completely destroys their view of what it is that they're trying to explore or explain or get proof of. Exactly. And... Let me go back to the very first question that you asked me. Why did you get into this? I think one of the most important things for people that want to get involved in this, they need to be able to get involved in it for the right reasons. Most people that you talk to in the field will say, I got into it because I had an experience or because I had a relative die and I know there has to be more and I want to communicate with them. They are so focused on proving that it's real that generally they aren't capable of accepting any other answer, regardless of how credible it may be. 
But we have to admit, I think probably you would agree, and correct me if I'm wrong here, that people are having genuine experiences, Absolutely. even even if yeah, even if we haven't got the explanation yet, and that some of them are pretty interesting. They're they're not always easily explainable. Sometimes they're not explainable at all. Exactly, and that's one of the things of even people who I've been able to explain beyond a shadow of a doubt something that's happened to them may be so so sold into it that you you can't explain it out but at the same time how can I put this uh, they believe I mean you can't take a lot of belief away from people it's it's probably the hardest thing to explain somebody away from you know what let's get let's get past that we'll talk about belief in our final segment and possible answers with brian jean and randall you're in the paracast thank you for listening to gcn Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. As you know, neighbors, web hosting can be pretty cheap, but not all hosting is the same. DreamHost wins best of awards year after year. You get unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, and even the low-cost plans put your sites on high-performance SSDs. Want to know more about what DreamHost has to offer? Go to technightowl.com slash host. Once again, that's TechNightOwl.com slash host. First game attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. When you use public Wi-Fi, hackers and identity thieves can see anything you do online. Embarrassing photos, your web history, even your passwords. That's why I use private internet access to encrypt my internet connection for less than 10 cents a day. Sign up now at privateinternetaccess.com and in just a few minutes, you'll be browsing anonymously and only sharing what you want to share. Privateinternetaccess.com. It's time to protect your online privacy. Are you afraid to go to the mailbox because of letter after letter from the IRS? Are they stacking on more and more penalties and interest? By now, you know the problem won't go away on its own. Don't let the IRS chase you to your grave with penalties and interest and liens and levies. You need real help now. I'm Dan Pilla. I wrote the book on tax debt settlement, and I helped thousands of people solve tax problems they thought couldn't be solved. I can help you too. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, danpilla.com. That's danpilla.com, danpilla.com. Bacon lovers, we ship free. Try our amazing bacon. No refrigeration required. Proprietary value-added packaging provides 10-year shelf life and protects the leanest, thickest, center-cut, fully-cooked bacon in America today. Ready to eat right from the pouch or warm and serve. Savory and delicious. Wholesale price for your everyday use. Order today at readytoeatbacon.com. Readytoeatbacon.com. Standing up for what's right. Helping out when things go wrong. Raising our voices alone or together. Seeking the truth and speaking our minds. Not just making records, but breaking them. Fighting for victory on the battlefield and on the playing field. Seeing the world through new eyes and the earth from miles above. Redefining beauty, brains, and what it really means to be queen. Making ourselves heard on stage and on screen. Showing the way in Silicon Valley. And showing up for others wherever help is needed most. Not just making our mark, but making a difference. Now that's a job for a Girl Scout. Girl Scouts. 
preparing girls for a lifetime of leadership. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. This is Jacques Vallée, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. I would say, Brian, it's hard to get people away from their beliefs. In many cases, it's impossible. Well, no matter is. what they believe, you know, you can't persuade them. You just have to respect them. But getting back to UFO abductions, if somebody is frightened to death, because they've been, or they think they've been abducted by aliens. And I know people like that. Oh, absolutely. And they're probably suffering from PTSD, some of them. Really, really need some help, too. What's happening to them? Here's the thing. I'm going to jump a big fence right here. And let's assume that there are abductions going on. Let's say that that's just happening. But a large portion of these people it's probably not happening to it's something else like you say they've got ptsd there's a psychological problem there, there's some other aspect that's really driving this i'm not saying it's not a real experience i'm saying it's so frightening to them that causes some kind of psychological damage absolutely and the thing is this goes across the board with any i hate to use the word experiencer but i will of any paranormal phenomena if it is real to you, regardless if it's real or not, it's still real to you. If it's causing any kind of psychological harm, they need to seek counseling. And they need to seek the right counseling. I'm going to say that especially of the UFO world because there, there are a lot of UFO contactee specialists specialists that I think do a lot more damage than they do good. I kind of go back to the 80s and the satanic panic and implanted memories. I have dealt with a lot of those people and had to, had to work backwards from that. And unfortunately, somebody that's an expert really needs to be make sure they're an expert in the psycho the psychological field they're working in. And I tell this to people even with ghostly experiences. This has been something that has affected you, maybe negatively, seek counseling. Even if, especially on the ghost side of things, while I, I'm not a you know, proponent of religion, if you are a member of a church, go talk to your pastor, your, your priest, your whoever it is, your rabbi. That's what they're there for, is to help you cope with things. In the UFO side, it's the same thing. If something is happening or isn't happening, it's still impacting you, and you need to get some help to deal with it. In ufology, we've heard quite a bit in the last few decades about people using hypnotherapy as a means to recover memories about their various experiences. Do ghost investigators do the same thing or is that something that they avoid god i hope not just to kind of give you an idea about this when we were doing a lot of ufo type stuff the whole hypnotherapy thing came up and because i was familiar with like i say the the whole satanic panic thing going back in the 80s and how the implanted memories were working i actually went out and got certified as a hypnotist to find out how it works, what does it do, and what shouldn't you do. And one of the things they always will tell you is when you're using hypnosis for psychotherapy, never use regression. Because regression is a dangerous thing that you can generally hurt more than help. Because it's so easy for the bias of the hypnotist, counselor, therapist, whatever they are, to 
use their own biases to cause or create past experiences. I know I've got a couple of people that they, they probably don't like me, but as experiments, I've, I've implanted memories into them to see if it would work. And it, it absolutely does. And it's such a dangerous thing to do. And one of the things, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of give you an example here, is they say that the experience was so overwhelming that they've pushed that memory away and they, they can't remember it unless they, they go through this, this therapy to do it. If that was the case, let's take somebody that was in a war. Somebody who has true PSTD from a, from a war experience. You never hear them say, I went to a therapist or I went to a hypnotist and had to have this memory of this horrible thing that happened to me brought up so we could deal with it. They go there because they can't get away from it. They can't stop reliving it. It's such a horrible thing to them. Oh, this interesting thing, point. This yeah. thing of repressing memories, unfortunately, is seeming to appear to be a byproduct of a couple of really bad psychiatrists back in the 70s and 80s. And I think PTSD is a wonderful example of that. If you have a traumatizing experience, you're going to remember it. And it's going to be the worst thing that ever happened to you. Just sort of moving along a little bit before the end of the show. Uh, how about things like uh, then the channelers, the people who do the past life regression type of thing? So say someone sees, oh, I saw my dead grandmother and or somebody that was dressed in some medieval outfit wandering through the halls. And then they, they get in touch with them. And the next thing you know, they're saying, Oh, well, in your past life, you knew this person and so on. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. And strangely enough, I've been on the testing end of a lot of psychics and channelers and things along that line. Haven't seen a lot of good results, but I, I can't say there aren't any because I'm going to remain skeptical. But at the same time, and it's it's been one of the, the jokes of past life regression of how many people could have been Caesar. How many people could have been Cleopatra? You don't right. get regressed and say, oh, I was a stable hand in some unknown thing in the middle of Europe. No, you were royalty. Right. Well, at we least it fixes your that. problem now. You say, you know what? Right now I'm a ditch digger. And that's honorable work. Any kind of work is honorable. You get a day's pay. You do your job. That's honorable. It's like that actor who used to be on the, was it the Cosby show or something? And he's working at Trader Joe's. As a exactly. cashier. And they discovered he's being shamed by a certain yeah. TV network. But like, the story about him gets some work with Tyler Perry, with one of the NCIS shows. Guy's a credible actor with a Yale degree. Point is yeah. anything. But that doesn't mean that you want to have been reincarnated from Caesar or JFK or something. You want to know that at one time in your past, you were someone famous. Listen, we're just about out of time. So perhaps you can tell our listeners if they want to get more information about the research you do, Brian, Bonner, where do they go? They would go to RockyMountainParanormal.com. There's about 20 years worth of stuff on there, so there's a lot to dig through. And here I'll throw out one weird one. I'm about to start on a completely a new podcast that's strictly horror. Because, like I said previously, I'm absolutely a horror freak, thanks to my mother. And that will be starting up in the next probably few weeks. And that's at doyoulikescarymovies.com. I like it. You can find us on Twitter. No scary movies. <laughs> Just look for the Paracast. We have two Paracast fan clubs on Facebook. And sometime we'll merge them into one. But I understand if you do that now, what they do is they... They eliminate that one, and we lose the content. We also are working on a brand-new Paracast site with a new online store. Fabulous merchandise. Randall and I have seen it. I want to see this in a few days. You might see it when you hear this show, okay? The YouTube channel is being updated, too. We're doing all sorts of really good things. We're also looking at better ways to offer you the Paracast Plus 
but will always mean you get an ad-free version of this show, better quality audio, the After the Paracast podcast. Never know what to expect next. Go to plus.theparacast.com, plus.theparacast.com. We currently take payments through PayPal or with a major credit card, and we've got a couple of more possibilities in the offing in the future. I didn't know what to expect from you, and I'm pleased to understand your skeptical approach to paranormal research. Very refreshing, Brian Bonner. Thank you for joining us on the Paracast. Great meeting you. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast. <laughs>